friend again, Kola Emiola. Now listen, I want to share with you today on what I call kings and lord. Hallelujah. Kings and lord. Glory to God. Let's start from the book of Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 26 to 28. Then God said, I'm reading from the New, uh, New King James Version. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the bird of the hair, and over the cattle. Take note, over all the earth, not some part of the heart, not just Africa, not just Europe, not just America, not just uh, uh, Latin America, not just Asia. Let them have dominion over all the earth and over every creeping things that creeps on the earth. So God created man. Now, now God began to make, okay, let's go, let's go first. So God created man in his own image, in, in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female created he them. Then verse number 20. It, then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the head, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the bird of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the head. Verse number 28, And God said, See, I have given you, Oh, sorry, I've, I've jumped, I've jumped, I've jumped, hallelujah. So, 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 in verse number 26, God Created, God made known his intention. Look at it. Then God said, Let us make mine our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. God made his intention known. God wants something that will have dominion on the head. And God decided what is going to be their job. Their job will be they will have dominion on the head. Number two, who are these people that I'm going to send to take this responsibility for me? God says, I will create people that will be in my image. Let us make man in our image. In verse number 28, God now empowered them to do what he decided earlier to be done. Hallelujah. So we know what God intended, what he wants to do. We know who he wants to do that job. We know how that job will be because we have been empowered. Power. There is no argument that we don't have power to take dominion. We have been empowered to take it. Let me quickly define dominion. The word dominion also means rulership. It means um, lordship. It means uh, uh, um, ownership. That word dominion, it means ownership. It means rulership. It means lordship. It means to become lord. Now, now what am I saying? Amen. Praise God. Oh, glory. So, in Luke, when you, when, you, when, you, when you first understand what this means, you begin to understand why we are kings. Because in the book of uh, Romans chapter number 5, verse number 17, the Bible makes us to know, clearly. let's read it. Romans 5, 17. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Romans 5, 17. But God, uh, uh, but God be thanks that Though, uh, 517, yep, yep, yeah, glory, 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 glory. Then you receive a form of, you know, uh, okay, okay, okay. Now, God says in Romans that we have been made to reign in life as king. I think, let's check 417. Let's check 417. Oh, good. 417. For if by the one man offense, death reigns through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. So the essence of our being born again is so that we can reign in life. We can carry out the initial mandate of heaven for man. What is the initial mandate? God wants us to take dominion. Over this earth, he wants us to take lordship of it. He wants us to take rulership on it. He wants us to take ownership on it. Hallelujah. So, so now, in the book of how do, how do kings operate? How do lords operate? That's what I want to explain in this edition. How do kings operate? How do lords operate? Kings, take note of this. Kings operate by decree. Kings 
don't negotiate. <laughs> Kings don't bargain. They decree. Their words becomes decree. That's why in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number four, let's go. I'll come back here. Ecclesiastes, chapter number four. I think verse eight. Where are you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Oh, so much glory, glory, glory. Let's go to shit. Ecclesiastes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Chapter number 8, sorry, chapter number 8, verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say to him, what are you doing? Now, kings operate by decree. Kings don't beg. Kings don't negotiate. The word of a king is as good as being done. So when we are kings, we begin to understand that our word must begin to line up with the word of heaven, with the word of God, because everything that we say becomes a decree. Hallelujah. Our word becomes a decree. What we want to see, how we want it to be done. For example, when I say be healed, why? It becomes a decree. Why? Because the word of God says by his tribe we have been healed. When I say you are free, how do I know that you are free because the word of God says if the son shall make you free you shall be free indeed hallelujah so kings operate by decree they speak a word they speak it into existence they call the things that be not as though they were they speak things into existence now you have to begin to understand that as king you cannot just close your mouth like i have a saying a closed mouth is a closed destiny when you close your mouth you have closed your destiny you have closed your royalty you have closed your ability to rule and reign as king hallelujah kings rule by decree Hallelujah. If thou shalt say to this mountain, Mark chapter number 11, verse number 23, if thou shalt say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and you doubt not in your heart, you shall have whatsoever you say. Hallelujah. For out of your mouth is life and death. So, Kings speak the word into existence. We call the thing that be not as though they were. We speak prosperity where there is lack. We speak healing where there is sickness. We speak freedom where sin reigns. We speak liberty where men are held down in, in, in shackles. We speak justice where there is injustice. Hallelujah. Kings rule by decree. They decree what they want to see. They don't beg what they want to see. They decree what they want to see. My friend, Jesus is the king. We are the kings under him. We have to copy him. As Jesus speak, so we must speak today. Hallelujah. We must speak to everything that does not line up with the intention of God, to line up with the intention of God, because right here, we are here to rule and reign. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm going to speak to your body today. I'm going to speak into your business. I'm going to speak over that child. I'm going to speak over your spouse. I'm going to speak over that territory. I'm going to speak over that nation. And when we speak, when I speak and you agree with me, it comes to pass like that. Why? We are starting the office of kings. We are kings. We are not just priests. Priests is good, but we are also kings. And kings rule by decree. King, kings decree a thing and they expect it to be so. Now what happens when you decree a thing as king, angels go on errand for you. Because the Bible makes us to know that angels have been given to us to minister to us the hair of salvation. Now take note. Angels minister to heirs of salvation so that they can go and bring what we need into our life. They can go and bring what we need into our city. They can go and bring what we need into that person's body, into that person's business. As we release the word, angel goes straight to work. Now, when you don't release the word of God, angel has nothing to work with. Wow. Maybe I'll put it this way. Angel only demand one thing 
to put them in operation. Or better put, the, raw, the word of God is the raw material with which angels carry out their assignment. Angels never get tired. Angels want to work for you, but until you open your mouth and begin to speak as king, and begin to decree what you want to see, and begin to speak life where there is death, healing where there is sickness, liberty where there is shackle, then angel will now go out. The Bible says this angel, they excel in strength, akin to the word of his servant, or better say, akin to the word of kings. Praise <laughs> God. Now, what did angel do? They akin to the word. Who we'll give voice? They akin to the word of his, uh, to the voice of his word. Who we'll give voice to the word of God? We we quote, we make the word of God to our voice by speaking the word of God. So when I feel like I'm I, I, I'm not okay, my body. What did I say? I said by his stripe I'm I'm healed. I'm strong. Why Jesus has paid the price. I am healed in the name of Jesus. Now I may not feel it. I may not look. It may not look like that. But I keep on speaking in line with the word of God. What will angel do? Angel of healing will go into action immediately and begin to bring restoration back to your body. Now, when you are financially tight, what do you do? The Bible says, let the poor say, I am rich. You begin to open your mouth and say, I'm rich. I'm blessed. I'm not cursed. Uh, 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 God is making a way for me. Amen. God is making a way for me. What happened? The angel of prosperity is going to walk and make sure they begin to bring all that you need to fulfill that assignment at that time into your life. Angels always wait for what you will say. That's why the Bible says, do not say for an angel, it is an error. They don't understand error. Error is not part of their language. They want to carry out whatever you say. Kings decree. Kings rule by decree. Kings speak what they want to see. They don't speak according to what they see. They speak what they want to see. <laughs> oh, God. They speak what they want to see. They don't speak according to what they see. Why? Eyes are not meant for the things which are seen because the things which are seen are temporal, but for the things which are not seen, for the things which are not seen are eternal. Praise God. The things which are not seen are permanent. So we don't speak what we see. We see how that boy feel, but we speak healing over that boy. We speak we, we, we see what that boy is doing with his life, with drug, but we speak freedom and liberty over his life. That's why I don't, I, I tell, <laughs> some years ago a guy came to me, a, a parent came to me and said, my son uh, is drug addict. I said, no, your son is not, is not an addict to drug. Your son is having problem with drug or is having challenge with drug. Now we can break that yoke over your son. I have good news. That boy is completely free today, completely cleansed from drug. <laughs> Praise God. So king rule by decree. Number two, Lord. Lord rule by ownership. They own that thing. They own it. Let's check some 115 verse 16. Oh, glory to God. Psalm 115, thank you, Jesus. Psalm 115, verse number 16. The heaven, even the heaven, are the Lord's, but the heart he has given to the children of men. The heavens, even the heavens, are the Lord's. For example, the Bible says, the word, your word, O Lord, is settled in heaven. But on earth, some people have to do job to make it settle. That's why kings begin to speak those words, and those words begin to settle on earth, or settle in our lives. Praise God. As we agree with heaven and speak what heaven is saying, then we begin to see the effect of it on earth. Praise God. But the earth, he has given to the children or to the sons of men. What does that mean? The earth becomes our own. When you take ownership of it, you don't want any other thing to come and intrude into your property. 
The earth belongs to you. You don't have to wait on the leftover. You don't have to wait, wait until when every other person, people, a, a person has chosen, and then they give their hand out to you. The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, and the people therein. So what does God do? The earth is the Lord. He handed it over to his son Jesus, and Jesus gave it to you. Why? Hebrew, Hebrew chapter number one makes us to know that Jesus is the heir of all things. If he's the heir of all things, we are joint heir with him. That word joint heir with him is driven from co-heir. We are not sharing 50-50. We own everything that Jesus has 100%. Glory to God. 100%. Everything is just like husband and wife. They are not co-heir. They don't share their house 50-50. They own everything together. They own it 100% together. Praise God. Hallelujah. They own everything together. Praise God. So we are Lord on this heart. We take ownership of it. We don't beg for it. Take not, we, we, we take responsibility for the heart. We take responsibility for it. We own it. We make sure that no forces in hell come and govern our territory. We make sure that no forces in hell come and destroy our territory. We make sure that no forces in hell come and take over what God has given given to us. Praise God. God gave it to us. The Father gave it to us and we are not going to let any devil in hell take it from us. Now when you begin to combine these two together, when you begin to rule as kings with decree, and you begin to take ownership of the earth as Lord. Now Father, let me clearly explain. That is, it is from that word that we derive the word landlord or landlady. So it means you are the Lord of that land. Or you are the lady that is the Lord of that land. That's how we de develop landlord, landlady. So, in other words, this is the owner of that land. So, anything that is not in line with the word of God, that wants to take over your land, you have right to challenge that thing for trespassing on your property. For crossing the boundary. I heard, I heard the story, I think, yesterday but from my friend uh, Mark Curtis uh, of a prime minister who was going around uh, campaigning nice to the people. And uh, he happened to stay in the front of the house of somebody who happened to be his opponent or who doesn't uh, agree with his political view. But as he was stepping into the garden of this guy to greet the guy, the guys told the prime minister, you walk back from my, from, my, from my garden. This is my property. Now, what does the prime minister did? The prime minister obey him, step back, because that guy is the lord of that land. Even though the prime minister governed the entire country, but that property belongs to that guy, and he understands that is my property. I'm not going to allow any intrusion. I'm not going to allow any trespass, anybody to trespass here. So he said to the prime minister, get away from my garden. You don't come close to my garden. I don't like you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Don't come close. Now, that is the way we treat the enemy. We don't want to have anything with you. You betray the Father in heaven. You cause sickness on earth. You cause war. You cause evil on earth. You cause famine. You cause, you cause, you cause, you cause child abuse. You cause woman abuse. You cause all the crisis. You cause church division. We don't want to have anything to do with you. We are the Lord. Now, listen to this. What God gives to you, you have responsibility to preserve it. You have responsibility to defend it. You have responsibility to claim your lordship over that thing by not letting the devil come and intrude into it. That is why the Bible says in the, the book of Genesis, we go back to Genesis, <laughs> amen. Uh, chapter, number one, chapter number one, verse number 26, 27, 28. And in verse 28, God, the Bible says, and God, let's read that place, and God blessed them. Oh, glory to God. I feel an anointing here. Chapter number one, let's go to verse 28 straight. Oh, glory to God. Then God blessed them. That word bless them means God empowered them. God has an assignment. God has decided my assignment is I want, that I want to be done is I want people to, uh, men that will dominate for me. 
men that will take territory and keep it for me, men that will be in charge of the heart, just that will make the heart settle as the heaven settle, men that will make sure that my word in heaven is settled or established here on earth. God said, I want that kind of man. So in verse number 27, God created his desire, the man, you and I, he created us in his likeness and his image. In verse number 28, God empowered us. The Bible said, then God blessed them. God empowered them to prosper. God empowered them to succeed in the assignment that is given them. Hear me. We are not trying to succeed. We are not trying to do what God asks us to do. God, from beginning, has empowered us to succeed. We are success before we start. Now, let me explain that a little bit. Paul says, God who has kept me faithful and called me into the ministry. Now, hear this. We don't come to the ministry to try to be faithful in it. We come to ministry because we are faithful. So we are success before we start doing what we are doing today. Glory to God. So God empowers us to succeed uh, right from the beginning. And God said to them, be fruitful. Now, now, I'm not going to dwell much on that. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the head, but take note of this word, and subdue it. Now, right from Genesis chapter 1, verse number 28, God make us to know that there will be an opposition to what is ours. There will be an enemy that want to challenge what we own. There will be a trespasser that want to trespass on our land. And so God said, look, when the enemy come, he said, make sure you subdue it. Make sure you put the enemy under your feet. You are empowered to put the enemy under your feet. For the kingdom of this world must become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Now, no wonder the Bible says that uh, from the time of John, the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God, violent, violent, and the violent taken by force. So, Bible says, and it has been violently advanced. The kingdom of God can only be advanced when you violently push the enemy out of what is your home, out of what is your property, out, is, out of what God gave to you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God, now you can break the yoke of the enemy by your sword. You can break it over your territory. Why? Because God gave it to you and you are the land owner. You are the owner of that. Thing. So what you take ownership for? Nobody beg you to maintain it. You just know it is your property. You know why a lot of us see all kind of evil and close our eyes? We have not taken ownership of the heart. That the heart has been given to the sons of men. The heart has been given to us. Hallelujah. So he said, you subdue it. When the enemy comes, what do I do? Subdue. Friend, what do you do? You subdue. How do I subdue? In the name of the Lord. For God has given him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every nail should bow. Every demon should tremble. Every demon will fade. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ooh, I feel it. And take note, and lastly, I have dominion. You know why? You cannot have dominion if you are afraid to fight. If you don't want to fight, greatness is far from you. Greatness is far. If you don't want to fight, Greatness is far from you. Wow. I've got to fight? Yes, my friend. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith. There is a fight to fight. It is the fight, fight of faith. You have to fight the fight of faith. How do I fight the fight of faith? You begin to fight it by what you believe, by the word of God coming out in your mouth, by the action that you are taking. Hallelujah. Friend, it is time to step out and make heaven. And make heaven to invade where we are, where you are living today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's time to participate in making heaven to invade the heart completely. God, position you here so that it can partner with you. You can participate with him to make heaven invade the heart. Glory to God. It's time to begin to decree. It's time to begin to take ownership of what belongs to us. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's check. Uh, 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 let me see. I think Proverbs chapter number 20. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Friend, is a new day. We are not running away anymore. 
We're telling the devil no more. Thank you, Jesus. I think chapter number 20. From verse number 2. Look at this. The wrath of a king is like the roaring of a lion. Whosoever provoke him to anger sins against his own soul. You know why? <laughs> the reason why the enemy is still succeeding in getting you trapped in all those chains is that you have not yet get to a place where you are provoked to speak the word of God. Where you are provoked to say, today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. Today, this sickness must go. Today. Now, but, 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 but what about if I say it immediately and it doesn't go immediately? You see, this is what you don't understand. When kings speak a word, they don't try to discuss it again. Because that word becomes a decree that must be respect and honor. That word must be respected and honor. Hallelujah. So when you say no more sin, no more sickness, no more delay, no more badness, no more yoke. The enemy has no right to stay. The enemy, that's what Jesus said, whatsoever you ask the Father, that word ask is demand. Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it for you. Whatsoever you demand, if I demand healing, he will do it. If I demand freedom, he will do it for me. If I demand, whatever I demand, whatever I want to see, whatever I demand that is in line with the word of God. If I demand it and I can find a place in the word of God that says, oh, I will have it. Glory to God. Glory. I feel excited here. So kings and queens. We are, we, are, we are kings and we are lords. We are queens and landlady. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's time to take ownership of this art. It is time to roar. I like it. So the rod of a king is like the roaring of a lion. And the Bible says a lion against whom there is no rising nor turning. A lion against whom there is no rising nor turning. Tony, nothing rise against lion. Lion don't back down for anything. Lion don't quit. Lion don't turn back. Lion face it until it win. Lion focus until it accomplish. Lion pursue its prey until it take its, 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 its prey. My friend, a, the rod of a king is like the roaring of a lion. Now, let me tell you this. Do you know lion don't even pursue food all around? All lion need to do is to roar and cause the enemy will hear the voice behind the prey of the lion, will hear the voice behind them and run towards the lion and the lion catch his prey. Whoa! No wonder the Bible says, I've been young, now I'm old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children beg for bread. Your day of begging is over. Your day of begging God to be healed is over. Oh God, uh, please will you heal me? What are you teaching me about this? No, quit that rubbish. God is not teaching you anything with sickness. God is not using the work of the enemy to straighten you. God does not need the devil to discipline you. God does not need the devil to straighten his children. God does not need the enemy's permission to help him to train his child. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak ill and over you. I take authority. I stand as king of the, in the name above every other name. I rebuke that sickness. I rebuke that disease. In the name of Jesus, I proclaim you healed. In the name of Jesus, I speak to that cataract in your heart to be to melt away. In the name of Jesus, I speak to leukemia. Be gone. In the name of Jesus, I speak to cancer. I speak to that abnormal growth. I speak to that boil right now. Be gone. In the name of Jesus, melt away. Right now, in the name that is above every other name, you are healed from your head to your toes. In the name of Jesus, I speak to every fact about your sickness to become lie in the presence of the blood of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. You are delivered. You are set free. In the name of Jesus, begin to open your mouth. Begin to speak as king and declare over yourself, I am free. I am healed by the blood of the Lamb. I agree with God's servant. I agree with color today. I agree that I am healed. I am free. I am delivered. I am set free. I, I enjoy all that the blood of Jesus has made available for me in the name of Jesus. I speak healing right now. I speak miracle in your house. In the name of Jesus, right on that sick bed, I command your healing right now. That omona imbalance, right now, I speak healing. In the name of Jesus, that auto-revives hormone system, 
I speak healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Suddenly, you find out your woman is okay in the name of Jesus. I release you to go and carry that your miracle, baby. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace over your life. I speak peace over your nation. I speak peace over your business. I speak to your finance to rise up, to, to come alive again. In the name of Jesus, for God has made you the head and not the tail. Whatsoever I want to press you down and make you the tail. I break that yoke. I break the curse of the enemy. For this is the reason that the Son of God has manifest. So that it might destroy the works of the enemy. I destroy every work of hell in your life right now. In the name that is above every other name. In the name of Jesus, you are free. Free in the name of Jesus. Begin to enjoy your life from this day forward. I rebook every walk of hell. Whatever is making life not comfortable for you, I break it over your life right now. Whatever is causing pain in your body, I command miracle in the name of Jesus. Whatever is causing pain around your rib, right now, I don't know what the doctor call it, you are healed right now. In the name of Jesus, you are free. In the name that's above every other name. Friend, i like you to write us and share your testimony with us. i like you to write and see all the phone number, the emails, the website. Check it and write us. Let's hear your testimony. Let's share your joy. In the name of Jesus, we speak over your life complete and total liberty. In the name of Jesus, you go and reign in life right now. In the name of Jesus, you have taken the back seat long enough. By the power in the name of Jesus, you are cut apart to the front in the name of Jesus. The life of God enter you now. Even though you have been told that you will die, the life of God enter you. Death is swallowed up in victory in the name that is above every other name. Life is speaking into your bone, into your marrow, into your joint right now in the name of Jesus. Favor upon you like never before in the name of Jesus. Your day of crisis is over. Peace has taken over in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever is not found in redemption, whatsoever is not found in creation by the sacrifice of the blood, in the name of Jesus, they are removed in your life in Jesus' precious name. Be free in Jesus' precious name. Love you, my friend. I hope to see you another time. God bless you. Let's share in your joy. Let's share in your victory. Let's rejoice with you. Please write contact us and let's share. And if you want to give your life to Jesus, listen to me. We are here to pray with you. And right now, if you can just say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, forgive all my sins, establish in my heart your throne, and be the Lord, the King and the Lord of my life today, as I take dominion on earth for you from this day forward, in Jesus' mighty name. Now, if you need further information, you can write to the city church Langleton in Wales. God bless you, friend. I love you. Bye for now.